Hi, my name is Melanie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And in this video today, we're gonna to have a mix of a travel vlog and some thrifting. Just a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to do a little bit of traveling. So the first trip I took was to Franklin, Tennessee. I went with my two older sisters and my mom, and we were taking my mom to celebrate her 70th birthday. So we explored historic downtown Franklin, and we also took a short little drive out to Leaper's Fork. If you have never been to either of these two places, it's a must go. Then the very next weekend after that, I had the opportunity to travel to Utah with my husband. He was going on a work trip and he said, you wanna come along? And I thought, sure, why not? I've never been to Utah before and I love seeing new places. So we hopped on a plane and landed during the worst winter snowstorm that they have seen in February in the state of Utah. So yes it was crazy we settled in the town of midway which is outside salt lake city and did a little bit of thrifting there and also in heber city and so i've got some footage to share with you guys from that also so before we dive into the rest of the footage i want to just say be sure to hang around until the end of this video because i've got something really special and exciting that you're not going to want to miss Middle Tennessee is really a beautiful part of the country, and if you've never been to Leaper's Fort, it is a tiny, tiny little town outside of Franklin, which is outside of Nashville, Tennessee. It's become pretty popular, a little bit touristy, but it still has a very quaint vibe and a lot of fun places to look at. This is the first place we visited in town. It's a studio for David Arms, who is a local artist. That's my mom waving to you guys. And this place is absolutely amazing. Here's the view behind their little studio. And I'm gonna be sure to link his website right above here also, so you can check it out because you can shop online. His art um, has a lot of birds in it and it's just adorable. But his studio here, or his gallery, excuse me, has some of his original artwork, and it also had some amazing vintage items like these leather decanters, a lot of them from Italy, and just lots of other really, really neat stuff. I was transfixed with these succulent gardens that they have made from these vintage planters. They were definitely a little bit on the pricey side outside of, of my budget, but I love the idea of them. And this is something that you could for sure replicate yourself with some of these old planters that you might find at thrift stores or at antique malls near you. You can see he has some real treasures up here on these shelves, a gorgeous collection of antique leather books and some great glassware. And then this is his bird art, like I was telling you. These are all tea towels and little tote bags, and this is all available also in his online store. We had so much fun looking through all of these different prints that he had. My sister really wanted to take one of these canvases home. Um, she's taking some pictures because she wanted to remember the ones she wants so she can order them online. She's in the process of building her forever house out on some property that she bought and wants to include some of his art. And you can find those things in his online store. I don't think you can find these vintage items that he has, but all of his original artwork and the things that are produced with his original artwork are in his online shop. Would you like that for your birthday, Melanie? Melanie needs this one. I do kind of need it. You guys see what it says? It's the last uh. supper. <laughs> yes, it's super fun. 
after looking around a few more places in Leapers Fork, we headed into historic downtown Franklin and found this antique mall there. Now, sadly, we only had an hour <laughs> before they closed. This place was chock full of amazing things and I wish that I would have had more than an hour to look around. Found several great um, Asian pottery pieces, which again, I talked about those a lot last week. This over here is a great example of a gold Imari piece. The price on that, I think they had it at $35. But I'm just gonna let you guys look along with me as I shop and I'll point out some things as we go along. This vendor here had an incredible vintage brass collection. So I believe he has $74 on that horse statue, which really is, is a you know kind of the going rate, not a bad price on them. I like those deer bookends that he has back there. These, I think he has 34 on them or maybe 39. We'll check the price tag here. Yeah, 39 but so many brass, especially brass bookends. It was really fun to look through his whole collection. Take a look at this cabinet full of gorgeous antique flow blue pieces. Are they not beautiful? I do collect flow blue pieces and I really wish I could have taken some of these with me. The prices on them ranged from uh, about $25 to $45 depending upon the actual piece and the pattern. This vendor had just lots of little lovely things to look through and so let's take a minute and let's tour around her booth some. And then guess what? Right across the aisle, there is more brass. Y'all, I am in love with these. The Brass Donkey Reading a Book bookends for $69. Those were absolutely amazing. And then the brass elephants, even the little mouse is cute. When I saw these vintage vases over here, all I could think about were those succulent gardens that I showed you guys out at the David Arms Gallery. I think these would be perfect to do that with. This vendor here at the front had some really great Asian pottery pieces, like those set of cloisonne vases right there. She has 125 for the set. The colors on them were beautiful. And then there is that pretty blue temple jar right next to it. The price on that one I think was also in 
the, uh, yeah, 120. This lamp I debated on. I went back and forth and back and forth because it was absolutely gorgeous and really a very fair price at $145. It had a brand new shade. The colors on it are beautiful. I was sure that it would look beautiful in my bedroom, but I just didn't know that I'd be able to get it back without messing it up because really we had no packing room in the car. And that's a pretty example of a Famille Rose uh, vase right there for $110. I wasn't surprised that I found some Shinrossery pieces here. Again, they're very popular down here in the South and we are kind of right in the heart of the South here in Franklin outside of Nashville. Just so much to look at at this mall. I really enjoyed it. So this was my first time seeing the mountains in the winter and I thought it was just absolutely beautiful. It was very cold for sure, but it was absolutely beautiful. This is downtown Midway, which is where we stayed. It's a little town out of Salt Lake City. Now by the time we were driving through, most of the shops and things were closed, but it looked so quaint and just like a nice little place to spend an afternoon or grab a cup of coffee. Again, just beautiful scenery. So this is where we spent our two days staying. It was the Zermatt Spa and Resort, again in Midway, Utah. I definitely recommend it. We had a really lovely stay there. That restaurant um, right there that you see was excellent. Food was excellent. And I just kind of want to let you guys see how pretty it was with the snow and the lights and those crazy icicles. I've literally never seen anything like that before. Just an absolutely beautiful setting and a really nice place to be. also want to give a shout out to this restaurant it's called the back 40 ranch house grill if you're in the area I definitely recommend it All right, so after grabbing a bite to eat, it was time to do some thrifting. I only found two thrift stores in the area. This one was run by the local Catholic church, and we're gonna take a peek, see what we could find in here. I thought it was really interesting that they had several sets of dishes that they were selling as an entire set. So like that one is $180 for the whole set. 
And then there is a little bit more modern Noritake set up here. I believe they have $3.99. I just don't see that often at thrift stores, and I thought that was interesting and different. I did spot this vintage cloisonne piece up here on the shelf. Unfortunately, it had a real damaged spot right there. The price on it was only $8. That's probably why something looks like it was dropped or hit right there. Not my favorite colors, but still a nice specimen of cloisonne. And this little piece was just kind of funky. It was $5. Definitely couldn't fit that in the suitcase to take it back, but that, I thought it was kind of cool. And behind this big fake piece of cabbage, there was a great scale. So vintage Hansen scale, it was missing the front piece of glass, but $12 and look at how good of condition the paint is. If I could have fit that in the suitcase, I for sure would have taken that home with me too. This painting was beautiful, $4.75 for that. Then my husband spotted this piece, again, back to that Asian pottery. It was so interesting, $35, that's pretty pricey. It almost felt like plastic, it was so lightweight, but it was definitely ceramic. So I think probably like an eggshell porcelain. I was really intrigued with it, but for the life of me, I could not figure out anything with that mark. I tried to Google it and see if it was valuable. I just couldn't make myself spend the $35 on it without being able to determine its value but it was a neat piece. If anybody watching knows anything about it, I would love to hear. All right, so nothing that we couldn't live without. The typical fair, belts, underwear. Yeah. Toys and a few kind of crazy things. That one eggshell porcelain uh, yeah. piece that I just don't know that it was, the price on it was just too much, cool piece, but, yeah. but it's always fun to see what else is available in other places. Watch the country. Outside yeah. of Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, let's go see if we can find somewhere else. Okay. I don't know. How long do you think it takes this much snow to melt? You asking me? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Weeks? <laughs> it's more than we've ever seen. All right, let's go check out this second location. This place was busy. It was full of people and it was full of stuff too. This whole dinnerware set I thought was really pretty. Um, not anything that's old, but still pretty nonetheless. And I was kind of digging this vegetable plate right here. Um, I forget what the price was on it. Maybe 12 is what they had on it. I think so, yeah. Again, I didn't feel good about trying to pack that in the suitcase, but I thought that was a really neat piece. And I've never seen this many pillows before in a thrift store. This one right here was in excellent shape. It would go with my living room decor perfectly. And then the one behind it has kind of this funky leather trim, which I thought was a really cool look. If you've got, you know, a place in the mountains or a cabin, I'm not sure they had, you know, color coded tags. So I don't know the price on these, but there were so many pillows and they were all in really nice shape. See what I see up here on this shelf? This is a piece of whole pottery and check out that price tag on it, five bucks. Okay, so I picked this up off the shelf. Can you see what it is? There. It is a um, paper towel dispenser holder, but I thought, gosh, it's really nice and heavy. And this must be really nice quality. And then I flipped it over and look, ta-da, 25 bucks at Ballard here. Eight, 
Don't think I can fit it in the suitcase to take it home though. But what a great find. They had a nice selection of vintage cameras. These all were in the $25 to $35 range. And then several pieces of McCoy pottery. Again, I was thinking about those kind of vintage succulent gardens. Those also were all $25 each, I believe. So now that I'm back home, I want to give you a little bit of a closer look of the few items that I brought home with me. The first thing that I found in Franklin is this gorgeous antique English sugar pot. It is by the Henry Alcock Company and I paid a mere $2.50. The vendor had marked it down, I think because it has a crack on it and a couple little spots on the feet. but. That's an incredible price to pay for a piece of antique English ironstone. The next thing I purchased in that Franklin antique mall is this chinoiserie vase. I actually talked about this piece in last week's video where we talked all about chinoiserie. I wanted to just share a little bit more of it again, some close up pictures. There was so many beautiful chinoiserie pieces there in that antique mall. I wish I could have taken all of them home but this was the piece I settled on. From that thrift store in Utah, I did bring home that $5 piece of whole pottery. This piece is overall in really, really great condition. For $5, it was hard to pass it up. I've seen pieces just like this online priced for 20 to 25, so I think it was a great find. So my husband, Brad, actually found this at the thrift store. It is a $3 vintage backgammon set. From the best I can tell, it's complete with the exception of maybe missing one or two die. I really like the leather container. It's in good condition. It's a little bit dirty on the inside, but that's nothing that we can't easily fix. Now you saw this in the video, but I wanna show it to you a little bit more up close. This amazing poster print from David Arms of The Last Supper interpreted with birds. So cute, adorable, I love it. I can't wait to go get it framed and add it to my Last Supper collection. Another piece of David Arms art that I came home with is this adorable tote bag that my sister gifted me for my birthday. So look at this sweet little bird. He's standing on a piece of rosemary and it says hope. And he had several different designs. I believe this was around $15. I don't remember exactly, but I've been needing a new tote bag just to carry my computer in when I go out to work. And I loved that he's on this piece of rosemary. All of his bird art was incredible. And again, I'm gonna share the link to his website right up here so you guys can go check it out. So not a ton of pieces. Again, I didn't have a lot of room to pack and take stuff home with me, but I saw a lot that I would have loved to have brought back with me. I'm always grateful to be able to travel and see new things, and I enjoyed taking you guys along with me this time. So a quick shout out before I sign off, I wanna say thank you to Lori Cook. She is a subscriber and a vintage lover and picker herself. So when I got home from Utah, I had a package from her, and it included a lovely handwritten note and two treasures that she shared with me, one is this Last Supper chocolate mold. I know it's hard to see. But you guys know how I am with my last suppers. So this is a chocolate mold. And Lori, I wanna tell you that my 10 year old son is fired up about helping me make a last supper chocolate bar. She also sent me this gold last supper metal hanging, which is different than anything that I have. I was touched, Lori, that you thought about me when you were out picking these items and that you took the time to package them up and send them to me. I feel very honored and special that you would do that. So thank you so much. So one more special thing that's in this video before we wrap up. So I'm gonna be giving away one copy of this book, Big Thrift Energy by Virginia 
Shamley. I grabbed a copy from the library and it's an amazing resource. This author is definitely a pro at the art of picking and thrifting. All right, it's gonna be super easy to join the giveaway for this. All you have to do is click this link that is right up here. It's gonna take you to one page online where you can enter your email in one week. So that's next Friday. We are gonna close the giveaway. I'll take all the emails that we get and one of them will be randomly selected for the book. So if you win, I'm gonna contact you via email. So please don't use an email that you don't check. It's gotta be one that I can actually reach you at if you wanna be a winner. So in about a week, be looking in your emails to see if you've won. I'll also make an announcement on our community page. All right, you guys are awesome. I hope you had fun coming along, traveling with me today, doing a little bit of virtual shopping. I'll see you guys again soon.